Masks, hats, everything for Halloween. Places on chef, that's right, yeah. Come on, let's move. <laughs> hey, do you want to get a mask, man, there? No, even your own mother wouldn't know, you know. The Scottish play? Yeah. And you were in it? A small part, but I was in it. When was this, Dan? Very years ago, when the fit-ups used to come around. The what-ups? The fish-ups, the travelling theatre company. Wait till you hear this. I love this. I never heard of the Scottish play. Yeah, but that's not the real name of it. No. No, that's just the name used by us Tesbians. Tesbians? <laughs> Luda. What's the real name of it, so? I can't tell you that. Is it a secret? No, it's bad luck to mention the name of it. Why? It just is. So you always say the Scottish play. Exactly. Never Macbeth. Mac what? Macbeth. So that's the real name of it. You unadulterated own shock. How many times have you to be told? Sorry. Outside, spit, turn around three times and ask to be let back in. <laughs> he fell for that one, Dan. <laughs> There's no falling for anything. That's the only way to shake off the curse. Curse? Yeah. It's bad luck to mention the name of the Scottish play. You have to make amends. Tell us about this play anyway. Well, the fit-ups used to come around. There was a fellow by the name of Andrew McMasters. I remember him. Yeah, a big tall fella there was a travelling troupe and a hat. Well, they always asked a prominent local to get involved. Of course, they asked me to play the part of the warrior. So I went down to the hall and I met him. And he taught me what to say and gave me a wig. Now, the part I was to play was... Small but pivotal. I love that. Small but pivotal. Did you ask to come back in? No. The part I was to play was small but pivotal. Pivotal? Small part, but a big part at the same time. Now you have it. Can I come in? All right. Anyway, in the play. The Scottish play. There was a bit of a needle between the two clans, and near the end there was a big battle. Oh, shields, spears. Shields, spears, or in our case, hurlies. Here go, then. Well, at the significant moment, I stepped out through the fog for all the world. Small but pivotal. Like a Scottish warrior, you luder. And me man McMasters is playing the king, standing on a class of a cardboard rock. Well, says I to him, As I stood upon my watch, I looked towards Byron and Adam. The woods began to move. That was good. The Byron and Well, he let a roar out of him. Liar and a slave, says he. Go away. Well, fuck you, says I. She wasn't you the one that taught me to say it. And he shook his head. And what's more, says I, you wrote it down on the back of a gold flake box. And I pulled out the box and I showed it to him. You did? Funny, the fit-ups never came around again after that. Trick, trick or treat? Trick? Or treat? Oh, uh, I think I will have the treat, please. Feck off! Luder! <laughs> Hello, ladies! Hello, Father! God bless, ladies. That's a fact. The one crowd that are not into Halloween are the Jehovah's Witnesses. I suppose against their religion. Didn't that at all. They just don't like people coming around knocking on the door and eyeing them. How are you, Father? Can I get you anything? Um, I'll have a cup of coffee, please, Jaxie, if it's not too much trouble. Right, Jar. I was hoping I might find Willie Power. <laughs> Fair, I try not to give you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Feckin' junk kettle. Hop up there, Jimmy, and flick that switch for me, good man. No coffee, Father. Can you get something else? Ah, no, I was really only hoping to bump into Willie. No sign of him so far. Well, should, listen, you might be interested. I finally took myself up the attic. Is that right, Father? Of course, it hadn't been cleaned for years. Most of the stuff up there belonged to old Father Malarkey. Filthy, musty, smelly. True, Father, but he was well liked. And no, I meant the attic, Dan. Oh. Anyway, didn't I find this? The Killerness Gully Annual Halloween One Act Drama Festival 1955. There was two groups competing. The Kilna Scully Drama Circle and the Bally Players. Isn't that gas? Tis, Father. Kilna Scully put on the priest and the pot of soup, and the Bally crowd put on... The chairs by Eugene Oanshock. UNESCO. That's right. How long did it run for? Two one act plays. That'd be about an hour, wouldn't it? And no, how many years? Only the one, Father. Really? Well, that's all about to change. What do you mean? I've decided to revive the Kilness Gully Annual Halloween One Act Drama Festival. Excuse me, Father. I have to go straight in the spuds. 
thick. Bottom? Yes, yes, in Midsummer Night's Dream in college. That's the extent of my acting, I'm afraid. I bet you're a lovely bottom, father. Thanks, Coretti. <laughs> Would you like some Halloween break? Oh, thanks, Coretti. Mmm. God, oh, this takes me back. Mm. Puck! I beg your pardon? Puck! My husband Mossy played Puck once. Oh, yes. One of the fairies. Yes. That's what my mother used to always say. Although I can assure you, Father, we were happily married for years. So, you're thinking of bringing back the annual Halloween One Act Drama Festival? Yes, Gretty, I am. The idea didn't seem to go on too well in Jaxie's. What do you think? I don't think it's a good idea, Father. It didn't go down terribly well the last time. In 55? Yes. They say there's a curse attached to it. You'll have no look for it, Father. Black of Reshi. Let's talk of a curse and bad luck. It's all nonsense. <coughs> it's not as if we were living in the... <coughs> in the mid... <coughs> Father! <coughs> 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 Choked on my ring. <laughs> See what you can do with that lot. Wendy, I confiscated them in Valley last night. I have a load of them below the station. Wait to hear this. Hats, masks, fireworks, prices so cheap they're explosive. Good luck, <laughs> Good luck, Father. Uh, Sergeant, could I have a quick word? Uh, hello, Father. Uh, certainly. Come on down to the car. I, I have something I want to show you. Dick, I think something bad happened here in 1955. Uh, thanks for telling us straight away, Father. The first 48 hours of any investigation is vital. No, no, no. I don't want you to investigate it. Well, that's a relief. Here. Throw your eye over this, Father. Wouldn't that look very well below in the side altar in the church? I don't think a picture of a communist is very appropriate for a church. Huh? That's Fidel Castro. A communist told me it was Padre Pio. <laughs> no. <laughs> the fecker. I thought you had them above in the station. You were had. Listen, do you know anything about the annual drama festival in 1955? I do indeed. Well, and I have a policy of not discussing cases that might be a bit sensitive. From 1955? Are you sure you're not interested in the picture, Father? How much? 60 euro. All right. Good man. Now, Dan's father was deeply involved in the festival in 55. And? Well, obviously, Dan is the man with all the details. But I'll wrap this for your father. 1955. I gathered that much. There was two entries. Ourselves and the Bally Boys. If there's a show worse than the Black and Tans, it's that show over in Bally. What happened? We did a proper play. A good play. An Irish play. The priest in the pot of soup. We did it well. We had a real set, a dresser, table and chairs, and a real cottage. My father, God rest his soul, father, attached it himself. Attached the set? Attached it. Dan's father. God rest. And the other shower. The baddie boys. Arrived down with a bunch of old chairs. <laughs> Your set? I ask you. But their play was called The Chairs. That's right, father. A greater heap of rubbish should be hard pressed to find anywhere. Should the cast was invisible. <laughs> I love this bit. Except for a couple of our ones yapping away to the invisible people about some emperor who was due on at any minute. And then the curtains drew. I mean, I mean, you call that a play. No dresser or nothing. Maybe it was art. Art me out. I know, Dan. You have to be open for new experiences. Now, lads, when I was in college... In all fairness, Father, this has nothing got to do with college. I take it the ballet players won? We were beaten by eight chairs, two aegis, and a clown with a blackboard. They didn't even have a set. Or a play. <laughs> Isn't it gas? <laughs> gas? No. Tell him, Dan. He might as well know. Well, tempers are rising at the presentation of the prizes. When the belly buys eight feckin' chairs, one best set award over our cottage. Well, a scuffle broke out, and the adjudicator got a slap in the gob from a box of USA assorted biscuits that was meant for the raffle. 
That's when the belly bites, nailed fat or heat slip, suit hand to the stage. Well, we broke three of their chairs. They dragged down the dresser, breaking three plates and two saucers belonging to... Does anyone hear that music? Noni Gallagher. Noni Gallagher. Wait till you hear what the belly boys did next, Father. They threw a sweet afton butt into the tatch. The whole lot took off. The tatch, set, the hall, all up in flames. We were looking to get out of there with our lives. And the only sound that could be heard over the sound of the burning was the sound of the belly boys yelping as they ran across the fields. I'll tell you this much, Father. That set was the best bit of tatch my father ever did. And he took to the bed after that. And that fella is why there hasn't been a drama festival in Kilna Scully for 50 years. Oh. Well, uh, I wish someone had told me about this before. Before what, father? Uh, before I advertised the um, second annual drama festival. One entry already. <laughs> Bally players. <laughs> Now, the main item on the agenda here today is to decide which play we're going to do. Now, it's never good to change a winning team in the middle of a race. So I'm proposing here today that we do the priest and the pot of soup. It was good enough 50 years ago, it's good enough now. What's it about, Willie? About 30 minutes, which is just right for a one act. What's the story? A hilarious comedy about a priest, a dresser, a mother, an evil landlord and an Egypt. Isn't that exactly what we're looking for? Right. Well, that's that second so. May, may I say something? Now, for the next thing on the agenda, the set. Dan Clancy has agreed to touch it. Hey! Fine, Dan. It's in the fire. Hey, come on, Dan. We have him now. Woo! And I'm delighted to announce here, as your public representative, that as we speak, Pat Connors is scouring the countryside for a dresser. <laughs> May I say something? This drama festival is a great opportunity for us to nurture good relations with our neighbouring parish. And knock seven shades of shite out of the belly whites. I think Larry would like to say something, Willie. The chair recognises Larry Cummins. What's it now, Larry? I was thinking... That's a first for Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking... What about a backdrop? Mm. Backdrop? Yeah. A painted cloth of a cottage. It would save us a lot of money. That's just typical of you, Larry Cummins. Mm. Thinking you can waltz in here in election year and try and make a political football out of the priest in the pot of soup and sabotage Kilner Scully's chance at bringing back the cup for the best set and avenging the wrong done to dance fair off. I was only saying. Well, don't be only saying. Now, we'll have our set, and it'll be good. We'll have three walls, a dresser, and a thatched roof. Now, there's a lot of work to be done. So if there's nothing else to be said, let's get started. As a matter of interest, Willie, what are the ballet players doing? Farrell? Um, the chairs by Ionesco. Mm. This means war! <laughs> How much is the dresser? Fifty euro. Are the ornaments included? No. Ah, you can keep it so. How's it going above in the hall? Grand Dick, once we get the walls up, we get stuck into the roof. And how's the thatch going then? Are you able to get enough of it? Yeah, there's the world of it up at the back of Rattling Hall. The yellow African reed. Pinky Potter had brought it back from Botswana. But the father swore by it. Said he wouldn't thatch with that nets. Can I interest you in some cable ties? No, Dick. We'll do this the old-fashioned way. One more time, please. This cottage is mine, and the rent is due. I'll take whatever I can. Look away, Mother. Wait. Wait. I come from the police. It is my way of thinking this night that this man, that this man is an interluder. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry, Theo. This, this man is an interloper. Sorry, that's... Sorry. I get it right then, Theo. I will. Sorry. Poor old Pinky. Who was Pinky Potterton? 
Oh, he was a famous botanicalist. You know, he used to go traipsing all over the world there, collecting old flowers and plants and trees and things like that there. And he used to cross pollinate and blow at the big house. Oh, I remember he had this one particular plant, big, huge green yolk there. Oh, God, it was a fierce, ugly looking thing, an awful cut of yolk. But he was fierce attached to it. I remember that. Fellas used to come from all over and take cuttings of it. Didn't think he used to put in his pipe. Dan, Dan. He did. <laughs> he never took it out of his mouth, sir. <laughs> sure, Pinky and the father got me good to my very clothes. Pinky used to call her out to the house when I was young, and the two of them would sit around the fire there, smoking down <laughs> pipe and laughing and... <laughs> <laughs> and then, when he came up around two in the morning, and old panic come out, and a mountain of food you never seen the likes of an eight before, huh? Rashers, eggs, and black pudding. <laughs> Rashers, eggs, and black pudding, and the like. <laughs> and then they'd have a big pot of tea, and then Pinky pull out a few scores he was left bringing up with him, and next thing they start off with the last of the day! <laughs> No wonder he came to a bad end. What sort of a bad end? Oh, he was found hanging above in the landing. They say in order for him to get the rope up that high, he had to drag the sideboard out onto the landing. And for now, for he's aged and how he managed it. Where was this, Dan? Above in Rattling Hall. Well, we're going to get the reeds. Yeah! Interloper. Interluder. Oh, what? Sorry, Father. She's ready for the touch, lads. Right. Huh? Come on. This is taking ages. We're nearly done. Can we not go now, Dad? I'm scared. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not. Is that enough, Dan? Better be, I'm knackered. Yeah, that should be enough, I suppose. All right, there's timing for you. Come on, let's go. Good. This place gives me the willies. Ha! <laughs> no, not. <laughs> Is he ever going to fix that thing? Luder! Beckett, I'm going inside. In there? Yes, it's only a shower. Come on, we're going inside. Well, wait for me. Come on. What's <laughs> wrong? That one. You go first. Me? <laughs> This gives me the willies. Lord. What was that? How the hell do I know? Mother of God. What's that? It's scraping. But who is it? Maybe it's Pinky Potter. Pinky's dead, you Luda. I know. It's coming from there. It's Pinky. It's Pinky. You go. No, you go. It's coming from your way. In the name of God. Hey, Dick! Give us a hammer distresser, will you? I have a rope tied around. I just need a hand over to it. Right, Pat. And have you done ballet lessons before? Oh, yes, I have, years ago. But I was asked to leave after I pulled a groin muscle. It wasn't mine. <laughs> but I always wanted to do the splits. How flexible are you? Well, I can't do Tuesdays. Attention, please. Madam Wonder, Wonder will be closed for the afternoon. Do you want for a scene, sir? Well, what do you think of the dresser? She's as sweet as a nut, Dan. She's the icing on the cake, boys, huh? Huh? We have him now! Oh, good luck tonight, Father. Thanks. <laughs> Luther. What? You don't say good luck. You say break a leg. Break a leg tonight, Fowler. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Thanks. This cottage is mine. 
and the rent is due. And I take it whatever way I can. Look away, Mother. Wait. I come from the police. It is my way of thinking this night. This man is... Uh, interloper. 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 Imposter. <gasps> what does that mean, Father? It means 15 years hard labor, Widow Murphy. Constable? Go at this time! We'll have some soup, Father. We will, Mrs. Murphy. We'll have some soup this night. And we'll not be troubled by evil landlords. I'm thinking from this day forth. and girls, there will be a 15 minute interval of about 20 minutes to half an hour, uh, after which we'll have to sit through the belly players' production of chairs. Uh, there's tea free at the back of the hall, but first, uh, tickets for the raffle are now on sale. What do you mean, take the set down? I mean, move your set so we can put out our chairs. That set's going nowhere. Chairs? <laughs> i tell you what you can do. You can take your chairs and shove them up your... Hello, hello, everybody. Oh, yeah. Better they were just inquiring about the set. Is that right? We need an empty stage, fella. Isn't that what a drama festival is all about? Cooperation. Dan, lads, take down the set and uh, give them a hand with the chairs. Good men. Well, that's the thing, fella. It's not so much a set as a sort of a real cottage. What do you mean? It's made out of concrete. And cement. And plaster. It's not designed to be taken down. Right. Someone should buy that man a pint quick. We should have gone to Jax's. Finally, that concludes the evening, and all that's left for me to do is. What about the set? Yeah. What was that? Yeah. What about the award for best set? Oh, good heavens, I nearly forgot. The uh, award for best set. Now, this was an easy decision. Here we go, mate. So, I have no hesitation in presenting the best set award for their magnificent cottage. Yes! Yes! To the Bally players. Yeah. Oh, good shape. <laughs> Could you rust me up a cup of coffee, please, Jaxie? No problem, fella. I thought overall that went very well. In what way, fella, did it go well? well we scooped four of the five prizes. Bally got one. Isn't that neighbourly? I suppose it is. What are you on about? It wasn't it all your fault? How was it my fault? Didn't you wish him well instead of saying break a leg? Luther. Could have been an awful lot worse. He could have said the other thing. What other thing? The Scottish thing. What Scottish thing? Macbeth, is it? Hey! hey! Luther. Luther! <laughs> Masks, hats, everything for Halloween. Prices all cheap, that right, yeah. Come on, lads. Boo! <laughs> hey, do you want to get a mask, man, there? No, even your own mother wouldn't know, you know. The Scottish play? Yeah. And you were in it? A small part, but I was in it. When was this, Dan? Yeah, years ago when the fit ups used to come around. The what ups? The fit ups. The travelling theatre company. Wait till you hear this. I love this. 
I never heard of the Scottish play. Yeah, but that's not the real name of it. No. No, that's just the name used by us Tesbians. Tesbians? <laughs> Luther. What's the real name of it, so? Sure, I can't tell you that. Is it a secret? No, it's bad luck to mention the name of it. Why? It just is. So you always say the Scottish play. Exactly. Never Macbeth. Mac what? Macbeth. So sure, that's the real name of it. You unadulterated own shock. How many times have you to be told? Sorry. Outside, spit, turn around three times and ask to be let back in. <laughs> he fell for that one, Dan. <laughs> There's no falling for Anton. That's the only way to shake off the curse. Curse? Yeah. It's bad luck to mention the name of the Scottish play. You have to make amends. Tell us about this play anyway. Well, the fit-ups used to come around. There was a fellow by the name of Andrew McMasters. I remember him. Yeah, a big tall fella there was a travelling troupe and a hat. Well, they always asked a prominent local to get involved. Of course, they asked me to play the part of the warrior. So I went down to the hall and I met him. And he taught me what to say and gave me a week. Now, the part I was to play was... Small but pivotal. I love that. Small but pivotal. Did you ask to come back in? No. The part I was to play was small but pivotal. Pivotal? Small part, but a big part at the same time. Now you have it. Can you me? All right. Anyway, in the play. The Scottish play. There was a bit of a needle between the two clans, and near the end there was a big battle. Oh, shields, spears. Shields, spears, or in our case, hurlies. Here go then. Well, at the significant moment, I stepped out through the fog for all the world. Small but pivotal. Like a Scottish warrior, you luder. And me man McMasters is playing the king, standing on a class of a cardboard rock. Well, says I to him, As I stood upon my watch, I looked towards Byron and Annam, the woods began to move. That was good. The Byron and Well, he let a roar out of him. Liar and a slave, says he. Go away. Well, fuck you, says I. She wasn't you the one that taught me to say it. And he shook his head. And what's more, says I, you wrote it down on the back of a gold flake box. And I pulled out the box and I showed it to him. You did? Funny, the fit-ups never came around again after that. Trick or treat? treat. Trick? Or a treat. Oh, uh, I think I will have the treat, please. Fecka! Luder! <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello, father. God bless, ladies. That's a fact. The one crowd that are not into Halloween are the Jehovah's Witnesses. I suppose against their religion. Didn't that at all. They just don't like people coming around knocking on the door and eyeing them. How are you, Father? Can I get you in? Um, I'll have a cup of coffee, please, Jaxie, if it's not too much trouble. Right, Jar. I was hoping I might find Willie Power. <laughs> Father, he try not to give you a cup of coffee. <laughs> Feckin' junk kettle. Hop up there, Jimmy, and flick that switch for me, good man. No coffee, Father. Can you get something else? Ah, no, I was really only hoping to bump it. You're a lovely bottom, Father. Thanks, Coretti. <laughs> Would you like some Halloween break? Oh, thanks, Coretti. Mmm. God, oh, this takes me back. Ah. Puck! I beg your pardon? Puck! My husband Mossy played Puck once. Oh, yes. One of the fairies. Yes. That's what my mother used to always say. Although I can assure you, Father, we were happily married for years. <laughs> so, you're thinking of bringing back the annual Halloween one-act drama festival? Yes, Gretty, I am. The idea didn't seem to go on too well in Jaxie's. What do you think? I don't think it's a good idea, Father. It didn't go down terribly well the last time. In 55? Yes. They say there's a curse attached to it. You'll have no look for it, Father. Gretty, let's talk about... Cursed and bad luck. It's all nonsense. <coughs> it's not as if we were living in the... <coughs> in the mid... <coughs> Father! <coughs> Look, Father! You nearly choked on my ring. <coughs> See what you can do with that, lad. Wait, Dick. I can't speak to Willie. No sign of him so far. Well, sure, listen, you might be interested. I finally took myself up the attic. Is that right, Father? Of course, it hadn't been cleaned for years. Most of the stuff up there belonged to old Father Malarkey. Filthy, musty, smelly. 
through, Father, but he was well liked. And no, I meant the attic, Dan. Oh. Anyway, didn't I find this? The Killin' Scully Annual Halloween One Act Drama Festival 1955. There was two groups competing. The Killin' Scully Drama Circle and the Bally Players. Isn't that gas? It is, Father. Killing the Scully put on the priest and the pot of soup, and the ballet crowd put on the chairs by Eugene Owenshock. UNESCO, that's right. How long did it run for? Two one act plays. That'd be about an hour, wouldn't it? And no, how many years? Only the one, Father. Really? Well, that's all about to change. What do you mean? I've decided to revive the Killing the Scully annual Halloween one act drama festival. Excuse me, Father. I have to go straight in the spuds. Thick! Bottle! Yes, yes, in Midsummer Night's Dream in college. That's the extent of my acting, I'm afraid. I bet.